I recently did a poll on YouTube to see how many of you guys actually fish bass tournaments. In that poll, about 20% of you guys do fish tournaments, about 30% of you guys don't fish tournaments, and the other almost 50% of you guys said that you don't fish tournaments, but you would like to. So whether you're actually fishing tournaments now or you want to in the future, I think there's five lures that if you can master just these five lures, you're gonna be a lot better tournament fisherman. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. There are literally like millions of different lures out there on the market. I mean, you go down any Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, you search online at sportsmansoutfitters.com or wherever it may be, you're gonna see a ton of different types of lures. Now, when it comes to fishing tournaments, there's, there's certain pockets of the nation, right? There's certain little areas where certain lures kind of dominate in this area. There's certain lures that tend to dominate in the Carolinas, which is different than the lures that tend to dominate in Florida, which is also different than the lures that dominate in California. But the thing about the five lures I'm gonna share with you guys is that they can work really no matter where you are in the country. And the other reason that I selected these five lures is that they actually work in a number of different water conditions and temperatures. So in this video, I'm actually gonna go in order and I'm gonna save the best lure, the lure that I definitely think you should master for the very last one. So let's get right into it. Now, real quick, I wanna give an honorable mention to two lure categories that didn't make this list of five, but I think that they're really good tournament lures. The thing is, is they're very conditional lures, right? They only work under certain conditions, but if they are working in a tournament, they tend to dominate. They tend to be the lures that you want to fish. So the first honorable mention that I have is a swim bait and specifically a bigger swim bait like the one that I'm holding here, whether it's a big glide bait or maybe a bigger soft swim bait, like a boot tail style swim bait. If the swim bait is working, it tends to catch the biggest fish in your lake and in a tournament, you typically have a five fish limit. So catching big fish is really a critical thing that you wanna do in tournament bass fishing. But sometimes you can throw this bait all day long and you're gonna be fishing it in the wrong conditions and you're not gonna get a single bite or maybe you only get one bite. And that's not gonna do you anything for a tournament. But when this thing is on, which typically you have to have clear water conditions, a little bit of wind and typically a little bit of sun, and that's when these bigger swim baits tend to work the best. If you have those conditions, you can win a lot of tournaments on big swim bait. The second honorable mention that I wanna talk about is top water baits. This is a plopper, but whether you're fishing a plopper, a buzz bait, a walking style bait, a frog, top water baits are, are very similar to swim baits, as in if you have the right conditions for a top water bite during a tournament, you can win a lot of tournaments on top waters. A lot of guys are gonna say, oh man, I don't like to throw top waters because you lose a lot of fish, but if you have the right equipment, you're gonna catch a lot more than you're going to lose. They get big bites. But like I said, it's a conditional bait. It's not always going to work, but when it is on, you can win a lot of tournaments with a top water. So let's get into the five lures for tournament fishing. Coming in at number five is a drop shot. The drop shot is a crucial bait if you wanna become a tournament fisherman. You really need to have some sort of finesse option always ready when you are a tournament fisherman. You always have to have that kind of in your back pocket. If not, maybe that's the main thing that you're throwing. Fishing today, there's a ton of fishing pressure. It seems like almost any lake that you go to in the country, there's fishermen everywhere. There's bank fishermen, there's guys fishing out on boats everywhere. There's a lot of lures out there that the bass have seen a million times. Bass can get conditioned to the lures that we throw, but when it comes to fishing a drop shot, it seems like the bass don't really get conditioned to a drop shot as much as other lures. If you need to get a bite, a drop shot is a great way to start catching fish. And if you wanna start fishing more tournaments or start doing well in a lot of tournaments, having a good mindset out there on the water typically allows you to fish better and do better in tournaments. And simply getting bites and catching fish really helps your mindset out there in the water. So I always keep a drop shot really close by. You can fish it in extremely deep water. I mean, you can fish it down 50, 60 foot deep. Actually, the deepest bass that I ever 
ever caught in fishing period actually came on a drop shot and that was a smallmouth in 70 foot of water. Now the other thing is is you can actually fish a drop shot in really really shallow water. If I'm fishing a fishery that's very pressured or there's a lot of guys out there on the water a drop shot is a great shallow water bait. You know a lot of guys are going to be flipping soft plastics and jigs or throwing square bills up at that shallow cover but you can go behind those guys fish a drop shot and pick up fish. You can fish a drop shot on six pound test and you can fish a drop shot on 20 pound test if you want. That's what we actually call a bubba shot where you're fishing a drop shot on heavy line and heavy cover. One big misconception about the drop shot is that a lot of guys think it is a smaller fish lure and this is simply not true. It's not true at all. It gets a lot of bites, yes, so you can catch a large variety of sized fish on it, but the thing is, is I've caught some of the biggest bass that I've weighed in during tournaments actually on a drop shot. A couple years ago, I was fishing Lake Chickamauga and I weighed in a six pound, two ounce bass on day one of that tournament. And I caught that fish on a drop shot with a spinning rod on Lake Chickamauga. During practice for a tournament on the James River a couple years ago, I caught a fish close to seven pounds on a drop shot. So a drop shot catches big fish. So always keep a drop shot on the front deck of your boat during a tournament. Coming in at number four is a crankbait. If you wanna become a good tournament fisherman, one of the best things that you can do is learn how to cover water efficiently. And one of the best tools as an angler that we have for covering a lot of water in a lot of different depth zones is a crankbait. You can fish a square bill crankbait around wood cover and rock cover in a foot of water. You can also fish a deep diving crankbait in that 20 to 25 foot zone. And the thing that I love about a crankbait is it tends to catch some really, really big fish. And again, like I talked about, big fish is really key in order for you to do well in tournaments. Whether you catch just one big fish throughout the day or whether you can catch five, sometimes just that one big fish can really help you boost yourself up in the standings to help you get more checks and catch more bass. Now similarly to the drop shot, a crankbait can work in a number of different water conditions. You know, you can catch fish on a crankbait in the muddiest water. There's a ton of vibration in that bait. It moves a lot of water, but you can also catch fish on crankbaits in really, I mean, crystal clear water. You know, one of my favorite options for crystal clear water is fishing the silent versions of crankbaits in translucent colors. If I'm fishing really clear water, I don't want those fish to get a good look at that bait. So if I'm really speeding that thing along the bottom and it's a silent crankbait, that can really trigger some of the biggest bass to commit to that bait and you're gonna catch fish in really clear water all the way up to really muddy water on a crankbait. The biggest thing that I can tell you when it comes to fishing a crankbait during tournaments is you wanna make sure you have the right equipment. Like I talked about earlier with top waters, sometimes guys don't like to fish crankbaits because they lose a lot of fish on a crankbait. Now, one really big thing and really easy thing that you can do is simply change out the hooks on your crankbait. For the most part, the stock hooks that come on crankbaits or pretty much any bait that has treble hooks are pretty much junk. They can be pretty sharp. They're not gonna be the sharpest hooks out on the market. So no matter what, I always change out my hooks and I'm typically going to change them out to either a Fusion 19 round bend treble hook or a Mustad KVD triple grip, which is more of an EWG style treble hook. And guys, I'm going to leave links for all the lures and everything that I'm talking about in the description so you guys can pick these things up if you want to. Another huge component to not losing fish on a crankbait is fishing the right rod. Now, whether you like to fish a fiberglass rod, a composite rod, or a graphite rod, the biggest thing that you want is the right action. And when it comes to the right action, you really want a parabolic bending rod. That is the type of action that you want with a crankbait. That really allows you to keep more fish pinned on a crankbait so that you're not going to lose them. But no matter where I go in the country, I typically have some sort of crankbait tied on and on the front deck of my boat. All right, guys, so coming in at number three is the good old fashioned Texas rig. There is literally no place that I go that I don't have some sort of Texas rig tied up on the front deck of my boat. A Texas rig just catches fish. Now, whether you're Texas rigging a big worm or a little worm 
or a creature bait or a tube, no matter what it may be, you should always have some sort of Texas rig tied up. And again, like all these lures, it works in a lot of different situations in a lot of different depths. You can put a Texas rig in the middle of a tree, in the middle of a bush, in the middle of the thickest matted vegetation that you can find, and you can catch some big bass on a Texas rig, or you can fish it extremely deep. You can fish it offshore. This is honestly something that is a go-to. If I get to a new body of water and I can't get bit on any lure that I'm trying, I, I simply just pick up a Texas rig. For the most part, I'm picking up a Texas rig tubed. Like that is my number one bait for just simply getting bites. A Texas rig green pumpkin tube. You can fish it deep or shallow. I've actually caught fish swimming a Texas rig on lay down logs before. And probably the best thing about a Texas rig is it's probably the most snagless lure on the planet. If you rig that thing up properly, you're going to be able to fish it in anything and in anywhere. Now, when it comes to a Texas rig, the one thing I don't want you guys to discount is just that good old plastic worm. I feel like there's been so many different soft plastics created over the last 10 years, 20 years. You got a million different types of creature baits out there that I think that a lot of guys just get away from fishing a ribbon tail worm up on the bank. A lot of guys are gonna be going down the bank flipping a beaver style bait or a crawl style bait, whatever it may be, and then all of a sudden you show a fish a seven inch ribbon tail worm, they probably haven't seen that thing in 15 years. So guys, the ribbon tail worm, don't discount just that standard worm on a Texas rig. All right guys, we're coming up on the last two lures and I really couldn't decide whether to put this lure at number one or number two. I kind of varied a lot with these last two lures, but coming in at number two, I have selected the chatterbait. The thing about a chatterbait is it simply wins tournaments. There has been a ton. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about professional level events that are four days long or even the three day long ones that are won on a chatterbait. Like a lot of the lures that I'm talking about, a chatterbait works in a ton of different conditions. It can work in really, really clear water. It can work in really, really muddy water. It's probably the best grass fishing bait that you've ever fished in your life. You can whip it out of that grass. It's gonna come back clean. Clean. And you can also fish it right next to a dock or in a lay down. One of the best things about a chatterbait too is that it skips really, really well. You can skip it underneath of a dock. You can skip it underneath of an overhanging tree and it simply tends to catch that better than average fish. Now, one of the biggest things that I have seen, especially in the comments of this channel, is that guys simply don't feel comfortable fishing a chatterbait. There's a lot of guys out there talking about how overrated of a lure it is. Here's the thing. Anytime you guys want to learn a new lure, maybe it's one of the five that I'm talking about today, the best thing that you can do is simply just take that one rod out with you with that one lure and just try to learn that lure. You want to get comfortable with that lure. You really want to know the ins and outs of how that lure performs, how it falls in the water, how it feels with your rod. And the best thing that you can do is take it somewhere where you're going to catch fish. You know, if you have a farm pond where the fish are just loaded up in and you can just go out there and catch fish, then just take that lure, take a chatterbait out there and just go catch some and you're gonna gain a ton of confidence with that chatterbait. You can not only catch a lot of fish on it, but you can catch those big ones. I also hear a lot of guys say that a chatterbait is only for largemouth and that is not true. I mean, just not true at all. A chatterbait will catch big smallmouth, it'll catch big spotted bass, and obviously it'll catch big largemouth. I really like a chatterbait in basically one of three colors, and that's green pumpkin, white, and black and blue. Sometimes I'll use that red color during the spring of the year, but those three colors, if you have those three colors, you're gonna be set. You're gonna be able to fish it anywhere in the nation with just those three colors. All right, guys, we have come down to the number one lure that I think you need to learn if you wanna start doing better in tournaments or just fishing tournaments, and that is a jig. A jig is not a new lure, it's an old lure, and it's been winning tournaments for a number of years. I'm talking about back in the day when Denny Brower was doing nothing but fishing a jig and the guy won what 17, 18 tournaments. He has won a ton of tournaments by fishing a jig and still to this day if you can get on a good jig bite you're going to be in contention to win a lot of tournaments and that's the thing 
about a jig. It simply catches a better average fish. If I can get five bites all day long in a tournament on a jig, I feel really good at my odds at, at doing well in that tournament, if not winning that tournament. Me personally, I've caught some of the biggest bass of my life fishing a jig. And again, like all these lures, there's really a common theme. You can fish it in a number of different situations from muddy water to clean water. You can also fish it in the shallowest cover you can find and you can fish it on the deepest structure that you can find. You can fish football jigs in 30, 40 foot and you can fish a flipping jig in two foot, one foot, whatever it may be. It's simple guys, it catches big fish. If you can get bit on a jig, you're gonna do really well in a lot of tournaments. If you guys wanna know more about these lures, I've actually done some in-depth videos on drop shots and crankbaits and jigs and chatterbaits and Texas rigs. So if you guys wanna learn more, you can click on one of these videos. Thanks for watching, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.